Elder Ring is a massive game that people will probably find new stuff in for years to come. Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks, 10 new things players have discovered in Elden Ring. Starting off with number 10, you can kill Melina. You can kill most NPCs in Elden Ring, with very few exceptions. One character that was assumed to be impossible to kill was Melina, one of your few key allies throughout the story. At certain points, she'll appear at Sites of Grace to talk to you, and those are actually the only times she appears in-game, so most people assume there was just no way to hurt her. You can't do anything while resting at a Site of Grace, so unlike most most other NPCs that you can smack around your heart's content, Melina is pretty protected. At least, that is what we thought. A Japanese YouTuber named Tomato-chan managed to get around her supposed protections and actually kill her. She even has a death animation. To kill her, you have to set a trap. Spells like Fire's Deadly Sin and Freezing Mist cause continuous damage to anyone near them, so cast the spells and then set it a bonfire with them still active. Just sitting there obviously doesn't actually do anything, the only time she takes damage is when she's talking. Once she does though, her health should start dropping fast. Now, there's really no reason to kill Melina. In fact, she doesn't actually die anyway. She shows up like nothing ever happened for an next scripted appearance. But if you show people a character that can't be killed in a game filled with vulnerable NPCs, people are, well, gonna find ways to kill that character. Tell gamers they can't do something and they will try to do it 10 times harder. At number 9, players found this really weird invisible thing. Uh, this little weird thing revealed by Reddit or Blue Penguin 53 just a few days ago. For some reason, there's something that's invisible next to the forge of the giant's bonfire at the highest point of the mountaintop of the giants. It's not just a standard platform. It's got an unusual shape to it with some odd edges and different elevations. It just doesn't seem like it belongs here. And it's an interesting little find nonetheless. Elden Ring's a game that's no stranger to invisible platforms. They're rare and they tend to hide some pretty interesting rewards, so it makes sense for players to jump around trying to find whatever secrets might be left in the game. So finding an invisible stop you can stand on outside of a key location like the Forge of the Giants feels like a big deal, but as far as we can tell, there's really nothing to find. Another Reddit user named Saith Venom Drone had the best theory as to what this is. It's most likely geometry for a wolf head ornament that can be seen on other parts of the forge. What happened is the developers probably just turned this one invisible after they added the crack and forgot to remove the collision data. It's one of those things that seems like it might be a big discovery, but it's probably just a simple bug. And number eight, it's Fia's Champions. One of the more forgotten optional bosses in Elden Ring is Fia's Champions. A pretty basic invader style fight where you fight five enemies total. If you've been playing offline, it's always the same. But if you're online, the fight is actually a little randomized. Most assume it just drew from a pool of randomly generated enemies, but the actual way it works is more complicated. Getting held by Fia doesn't just make you the subject of a thousand memes and a health debuff. It, it actually has a second secret purpose. Credit for this one goes to Matt Gren on Twitter. They took a look at the game scripts and confirmed that if you're online, the game will upload your character's build when you're held by Fia, which is called up when another player takes on Fia's champion. This isn't the only time a fight does that. Getting the Great Jar's arsenal will upload your character build to become the Great Jar Knight for another player as well. This apparently is triggered when you're held before fighting the Lich Dragon boss as well. This is goodbye, my dear, but I am satisfied. I choose to lie with Godwin of my own will. Which is why all the champions you end up fighting as Fia's champions aren't all level 5 chumps. It's a small thing, but it's pretty cool to see From keeping up their tradition of including inexplicable multiplayer components to their games, even if it's not quite as epic as the old monk from Demon Souls. And number 7 is the Malketh Side of Grace ship. Elden Ring is by far the most open-ended Souls-like game. Just being able to jump on command is a game changer. Players through this have managed to discover a lot of creative ways to skip parts of levels. We've already covered one pretty decent skip in the crumbling Farah Mazura that lets you bypass the Godskin duo, but this skip's almost as good as that. With it, you can avoid many of the most annoying enemies in the area. Like, you can totally skip all the birds, shuriken guys, spellcasters, and the dragon just by doing a few careful jumps. Credit to Redditor Luvenir for finding this one. It's not essential, but some of these enemies can just be absolute hell for certain builds. So getting the option to completely bypass them can be pretty handy, even if you just, you know, run by them. Still, these kinds of parkour tricks are awesome, if nothing else. So we're always there to highlight these kinds of things. 
At number six, the Eyes of the Flame Chariot actually follow you. It's small, but it's a strange thing I didn't notice, and I bet a lot of other people didn't either. You know these weird Flame Chariot enemies in Kaelid and Liurnia? It seems like their eyes are just grafted onto their faces, basically like the shield version you can get, but no, if you look closely, you can see the eyes actually follow you independently from the rest of the head. Maybe some have noticed this one before, but I didn't. And the Reddit thread posted by Fuzzy Improvement shows us that, well, a lot of other people didn't notice it. To be frank, these things are already fairly weird, so I don't know that everybody was really looking for a new way for them to be weird. But we got it! Like, did we really need some crazy eyes to go with this order? Can I send it back to the kitchen? Can I do that? At number 5, the Wings of Astle has a new sound effect when it's close to the Astle boss fight. Here's a pretty unusual thing that we're crediting to Redditor Hans Christ one who probably wasn't the first person to notice this, but is the only poster I've seen with actual visual proof of this effect. For some reason, when you're close to the Astle boss door, any of the other Astle likes out there, like Astel or the Malformed Star enemies, the uh, Wing of Astle weapon gets a new sound effect, and its heavy attack gets faster, potentially. Why this happens, uh, there are not clear answers as of right now, but a few people in the thread have some convincing theories. Red Jingles offered that the Estelle boss sounds might have the same ID as the Wing of Astel weapon, so when the boss or enemy is loaded, then the sound changes. Most people recognize the sound being different, the speed of the attacks is a lot more contentious though. I went and tested the weapon a little bit, and I can't really tell the difference. The speed thing might be confirmation bias, but the sound is definitely different, and even if it's just a bug, it's an interesting little interaction, almost like the wing is somehow still connected to the boss. And number four is the weirdness of the deathbed dress. Uh, the deathbed dress is just a really weird buggy piece of armor. Maybe it has something to do with its ability to heal nearby allies or something, but there's just some strange interactions you can do with this thing. Case in point, if you equip a flail and do heavy attacks, apparently you will hurt yourself. That's actually something that's been known for a while now, but another more recent thing posted by Where'd My Piggy Go shows us that for some reason, if you try to sneak while wearing the dress, then enemy will pretty much always get alerted before you get close to them. You would think that this dress would be pretty quiet. It's not exactly a heavy suit of armor or anything, uh, so you'd think it wouldn't generate a lot of noise, but apparently not. Try to sneak anywhere wearing it and you get caught no matter where you go. The user speculated it's possible the healing buff the outfit has triggers enemies somehow, and I guess that's as good of a guess as anything else. You'd have to be a crazy person to wear a silky nightgown into a fight though, and I guess the game agrees with that, because any other explanation is it's just that it's uh, buggy. And number three is the Wed Wolf of Radagon, wearing jewelry. There are so many little details in Elden Ring that it's easy to miss all of them. And while this one's kind of minor in the long run, it's unusual. Uh, at the Academy of Raya Lucaria, you encounter the Red Wolf of Radagon. For most players, it's only a minor roadblock in the journey, but visually it's a pretty striking creature with its red fur and its lore implications. Um, to say the least, can't be ignored either. But one aspect of it a lot of people missed, myself included, is that it has jewelry. Credit to this one goes to CthulhuBot666, who posted a close-up of the wolf for proof, and yeah, it's got a pierced ear. Like, that's for sure a pierced ear. There's also metal beads braided into its fur as well. They're all little minor details that are basically impossible to see during the boss fight because it moves around pretty fast, but the attention to detail and the possible lore implications are very interesting and are still being found by players even now, months later. And number two is the Subterranean Shunning Ground Skip. If you absolutely hate this area, and I don't blame you if you do, it can be pretty rough, uh, this skip is a godsend. Credit for this one goes to two people, the real Fluforon for posting the video and Demon Boy 995 for suggesting it. It's a relatively simple skip that lets you basically bypass the entire area and skip straight to the elevator that takes you down to the boss. No more basilisks, no more annoying omen guys, no more getting lost in the confusing sewers. Now all you have to do is make a specific jump in the big cistern area that is not far from the first bonfire. It's not the easiest jump to make, but it doesn't require any special weapons or tricks. It just takes practice to pull off. From Software really just can't help themselves with hellish sewer levels in their games, and this place is kind of one of their toughest, so I don't blame anyone for wanting to skip it. 
And number one is using crystal darts on golems to make them go berserk. The discovery is a little older compared to the other stuff on this list, but it's really cool and we haven't really had a chance to show it off yet, so it's worth bringing up here, I think. As revealed on Twitter by Revion, crystal darts will actually overcharge stone constructs and make them fight for you. The thing is, there's nothing in the description that suggests these things will have this effect. All it says is that they do magic damage and that long ago, it is said that a golem crafter employed a simple crystal tool, which is uh, a, a pretty vague clue, if, if that's what it's supposed to be anyways. Using them on constructs like imps and burial watchdogs make them go berserk and attack anything nearby, and it's pretty entertaining to watch. That's all pretty nice, but what's really impressive is that the crystal darts work on the giant golems as well. It takes a few darts to do it, but it's pretty damn satisfying to watch these guys beat on each other instead of ganging up on you. The golems are some of the most intimidating enemies in the entire game, so having some way to neuter them feels kind of like cheating, but in like a good way. I am not going to lie about that. It, it's satisfying to watch them do that. That's all for today. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week. Best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription, so click subscribe. Don't forget to enable all notifications, and as always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter at Falcon the Hero. We'll see you next time right here on Game Ranks.